Hello and welcome. My name is Will Bazard, and today I'm going to talk to you about modeling fretboards in Rhinoceros, which is a uh, CAD program developed by a company called McNeil. Now, there's numerous different ways to do this. First one being using Stumax Fret Position Calculator, which is going to calculate the fret positions based on the rule of 18, which you should already be familiar with. But this in many ways is longhand way of doing this. It's not my preferred method, but it is one way that you can do it. So here on the Stumac window, we're gonna choose our number of frets. I'm gonna say 24. We'll choose our scale length. Let's do 25. And I can select if it's for one of many different instruments and we can select our measurement, whether it's in inches or millimeters. So I hit calculate here and it's going to give us two sets of numbers. One is from the nut to the fret, which is total distance from nut one, then from nut to fret two, nut to fret three, so on and so forth. And this one is fret to fret. Uh, you can do either method, but it's generally going to be best to measure from the nut so that you don't end up with a compound error. Say for instance, I enter one inch 329 thousandths of an inch for frets one to two, that is going to be applied to every subsequent fret that follows. So all of them are gonna be off by that much and it's gonna compound 22 times till we get to the end. That's not good. This is gonna work assuming that you know your fretboard dimensions, which is laid out in a couple different ways by different luthiers. Um, by and large, you're going to start with a nut width, which let's just say we're doing an inch and three quarters. So I will queue up the command line and type in my dimension, which you can see in the top left here. Hit enter. That's going to lock the line length to one inch and three quarters. And then I left click. One really good tip for Rhinoceros is if you're using a traditional mouse, mouse and keyboard, which is what I prefer to do, you can substitute hitting the enter key for pressing the right click button. So for instance, I just entered the line command. I can right click and it queues it up right away. And then I can left click and do my length. I can type that in again and I get another line that is an inch and three quarters. So it's a really good shorthand way of, of applying the enter key. It's gonna save you a lot of time because the less the, the less often that you have to lift your left hand off of the mouse, uh, the more efficient you're going to be. So back to fretboard dimensions. We have our nut width and you can decide on a taper, which is gonna be based on you know your total string length at the bridge. Generally, you want your fretboard to taper outward more than the path of the string does, uh, but we're just gonna use a basic measurement. Uh, but first, I need to lay out the frets. So I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I can. Long and short of it is, I'm going to select my line, enter the copy command, copy it from the position it's on, enter my first fret distance, which is one inch, 403 thousandths, hit enter, left click, and there. So again, next one is 2.728. And I left click, and the next one's going to be 3.978. Following that is the fourth fret, which is 5 inches, 157 thousandths. All right, and we're at the twelfth fret, which is going to be 12 and a half, which is half of our total scale length, which is 25 inches. So I'm only going to go this far. A standard Martin fretboard, or many standard Martin fretboards, will have a, a fretboard taper that ends up being two and a quarter inches at the 12th fret. So, I'm going to cue the line command again. Enter 2.25. I will place a point on the center here and get rid of my line so that I can put this in the center. Boom, okay, so then we can connect these and that gives us the exact taper of the fretboard that we want. And then we can use the extend command. And carry it out as far as we need to. Okay. So this is a good way of doing it. 
in the sense that uh, assuming you enter everything correctly, you know 100% that it is accurate. But my personal opinion is that that's largely a waste of time because there are much faster available options to you. One of them is this handy tool, which I like to use. It's called FretFind 2D. It runs in a browser. And it is very, very helpful. So we're just going to draw a, a, a standard fretboard using this tool. But we can do multiple scale lengths, individual scale lengths, I guess, in, in theory, if you want to. I'm not sure what you would do with this. But as you can see, you know, all these same measurements are laid out. We're going to do a single scale length, 25 inches again. Now, one defining difference with how this program lays out dimensions, particularly of the fretboard, compared to how most other luthiers might measure their dimension at the nut, is that this is measuring the string center to string center. And that's important to know because 1.375 is not what the nut width is going to be. That's just from E to E, total distance from the center of each string. In order to end up with an accurate nut width by the time you're done making your model, we have to make this number be whatever the fretboard overhang is, but twice the fretboard overhang. So two times this number. Let's just make it easy. Say it's an eighth of an inch. So if I make this 1.5, and I make this an eighth of an inch, we would be adding a quarter of an inch to 1.5, which makes it one inch and three quarters. You have to pay close attention to that because otherwise you will end up with uh, completely incorrect dimensions for your fretboard. Um, and then string width at the bridge, which is also handy. That is how most luthiers measure this end, string to string. Uh, and when you buy electric hardware, that's how that's going to be measured as well. Uh, I know that most of the hip shot hardware that I use is 2.08 at the bridge. And I don't quite want an inch and three quarters, so I'm going to back this down to 1.4, which will give us 1.65 total nut width. Uh, we can change our calculation method, number of frets, which I like to do plus one of however many that I want to have, because then I end up using this fret as the termination point for my fretboard. We can change our number of strings. We could do 12 strings, whatever. You can make any kind of instrument here. Uh, and we can also set the string spacing. So if you want to know exactly where the strings centers are going to have to be in order for the layout to be proportional, dependent on the diameter of the strings, you can enter in your string gauge here as well, which is important if you have individual saddles here or if you just want to know that. Um, very handy tool. So, but now uh, we have something that I can work with in the program. It's also going to give us the rough intonation point. This is not the true intonation point or the, the string length, but it is going to be a total of 25 inches from nut to this point. So we'll hit download. I've got it here. I'm going to drag it into Rhino. I will import. Make sure that my units are correct. I hit OK. And boom. I'll mirror it. I do that out of habit because it tends to be backwards, and that's especially important when it's a multi-scale fretboard. But it gives you these these lines, which are going to be tied to, if you look into the layer window on the right-hand side, um, group two. That's important to pay attention to. You want to make sure that you are drawing on something other than this, and you'll see why in a moment. But we can't genuinely use all these lines. You'll notice the program uses um, short lines to intersect uh, these points, which are the fret positions on the strings. All of this, this program calculates everything as intersection points between the string center and the fret position. So if we were to do a multi-scale fretboard, for instance, drag this in here, this is just to get a closer look at it, but you'll see eh, intersection points. So 
I'm going to use this to lay out my positions. And I'm going to be working on those intersection points. You can see to the bottom right of the cursor, when I queue up the line command and I go to place it, it's telling me that it is at the intersection point, which is super duper important. And if you want to make this go even faster, down here at the bottom left, you can even turn off these um, O-snap parameters so that you don't accidentally snap to something else. I am confident that I can do that no problem, especially on a standard single scale fretboard. Now, a lot of this stuff I'm telling you, assuming that you have a decent or at least introductory level understanding of Rhinoceros and its basics. There are many great resources online that I recommend you check out. Check out the McNeil website and their YouTube where they will talk about many of these basic things. But a few of the really important ones is to have O-Snap on and have Ortho on. Ortho is going to lock everything to 90 degrees. I often switch that on and off. And same thing with O-Snap, depending on what I am doing. But those are two tools included in the program that make it really easy to do certain things. So now that I've essentially traced all of this stuff, which I'm going to also take note of my rough intonation point, I will turn the line off or turn those lines off and move this out of the way. Now I'll use the extend command. to extend these all beyond one another. Okay, now I have my fretboard profile. Now I'll cue the trim command to trim these intersecting lines. And with it still selected, I will enter the join command. That makes this profile a single closed curve, which is gonna be very handy later. Now, if we wanted to, and we were making this a through slot fretboard, we would just extend these lines to the ends. But I don't want to do that because I'm going to CNC machine this. So I will offset the profile roughly somewhere around 80 thousandths. Some people do as low as 60 or as high as 100. Uh, anywhere in there works for numerous different people for numerous different reasons. But now I'm going to extend everything to that line, which is going to give me those blind fret slots that I so desire. And I'm using a basic function of the program to help me do this efficiently, which is the selection tool, which you just activate by clicking and dragging the left mouse button. But you'll notice if we go from left to right, we get a closed line box. And if we go from right to left, we get a dotted line. Those are important. Um, dotted line will select everything that the box intersects closed line will only select the things that it completely surrounds. I have my 2D information for this fretboard. I don't need anything else. 2D. We're going to start working in 3D now. We're just going to change this to perspective now so that you can see the commands that I'm queuing in the, in the command window at the top left. So at this point, we determine our fretboard thickness. Uh, I can't make a straight line going upward in the perspective window, so I have to hop down to one of these side views. You can see here we're looking at it from the nut end probably, but I'm going to do a quarter of an inch, 0.25. Now I have a line that I can snap a surface or another line to. 
uh, I will now make a circle using the command circle. Rhino is very intuitive in that way. Uh, I want my radius to be 12 inches. So ensuring that we, I am doing the radius, and not the diameter or the circumference or the area, uh, I'm getting a 12 inch radius circle. Boom, I got that. Now I can move this on its quadrant to that line. Uh, and we have the beginnings of a 3D model here. At least we're, we're halfway there. Um, I am going to select and group my frets to make the next steps a little easier. The next command I'm going to use is called extrude curve. And what extrude curve does is extrudes a line into a surface. That's the basic function of Rhino. We are making frames with lines and draping surfaces over them. Um, really quick, if you want to practice this, we can enter extrude curve and then press F1. As long as you are connected to the internet, it's going to take you right to extrude curve and give you all of the information that is relevant to the command and its subcommands, how you can use them in very basic ways. So that's really handy. Now I'll extrude this. Oh, I gotta be in uh, at least shaded. I've extruded that circle into an open-ended cylinder. I will grab the profile and do the same thing. I extrude it past it. This is a technique that I use making all kinds of shapes. Essentially just extruding surfaces, making them intersect one another, and as long as they're intersecting one another, you can use them to trim each other. I'll select both, Q trim, trim both those away, and look at that. Now we have a beautiful, nearly complete fretboard. The next thing we need to do is select our frets and use the project command and project those frets onto the fretboard. So I hit, I select my frets, I enter project, I hit enter, then I select the surface, and then I hit enter. And those have jumped to the top side. And now we have something that we can machine. Again, my name is Will Bazard. If you're watching this, you know me. If you have any questions, you can talk to me about what you've seen here and I will help you to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.